Uh, good afternoon, welcome. And thank you all very, very much for joining us for the inaugural session, the inaugural uh, talk of our colloquium on the behavioral economics of philanthropy. So to, uh, to launch our series, we are extremely fortunate to have with us uh, Chris Frangione. Chris is uh, really involved in all levels of the X Prize and is very well versed in their operations. And he describes where he works as being at the intersection of audaciousness and achievability. Today I'm going to talk to you about the prize model in general and then also tie it into how it's a new model of philanthropy. We believe you can use prizes to solve many of these major problems that are facing humanity. So we've awarded over $30 million in prizes ranging from space to highly fuel efficient vehicles to oil cleanup. On the philanthropic side, we're seeing a new crop of philanthropy coming into this because it's very different than traditional grants or contracts. It's a very different way of thinking it. We really see two sets of clients. One of our clients is the person that gives us the money to launch the thing, right? And the other client are those teams that are competing. And so we have to find what motivates that person giving us the money. And more importantly, we have to figure out what motivates those teams to compete. There's certain attributes of the prize that really hits philanthropists. This is the ability to do something that is completely open where you can get anybody from around the world to compete. People that are in the industry, but more importantly, people that are not in the industry. Philanthropists love this idea, especially new money. If you start thinking about people making money in Silicon Valley or the tech world or wherever it may be, between all the exponential technologies that are out there, 3D printing, the internet, AI, whatever it may be, every single person in this room has access to experts all over the world that you could tap at any moment in time to form a team to compete for a prize. These teams are not competing for the prize push. You're going to hear me say this over and over and over again today. They're competing for something else. They're competing for the market. In most of these industries where we launch prizes and where prizes work best, the market isn't working for some reason. So in many of these markets, these barriers, these market failures, are impeding the ability of that market to move forward. And a prize can help take down those barriers. So if you give a grant or contract, you're betting on one or two or three, right? But with a prize, you're betting on a significant number. I mean, look at this. Our Global Learning X Prize has 198 teams from 40 countries. We would have had significantly more if we were allowed to take teams from countries we have sanctions against. In a prize, the teams are spending their own money to compete. We often see teams spending in, you know, 10 times the prize purse or more. Now, many people push back on prizes and they say, that's a really inefficient use of R&D, right? I mean, why do you need 100 teams spending money to solve this problem? The response is the market can take 100 teams. The market can take more than that. So look at that global learning thing. They're all going to come up with different solutions, and they're all going to have a niche in the market, or they might compete head-to-head -head in the market, and that's OK. This is the most important. Prizes democratize innovation. So if you do a traditional grant or contract, you have a really good chance of getting a really good idea. I know who you are, and I'm going to invest in you, and I'm going to invest in you. And you don't want to let me down, because you know I might invest in you again in the future, so you're going to do a good job. But are you going to take that crazy risk that's going to give you a breakthrough? No. So a prize, still you have a very good chance of getting a good idea, but you have a much better chance of getting a really good idea, and a much better chance of getting a really, really bad idea. But that's totally OK. Because instead of betting on one or two or three teams under that blue line, you might be betting under 100 teams under that orange line. You get all this while only paying for a successful outcome. Great. The teams pay their own way. <laughs> teams take all the risk. That is fantastic. So we try to keep that barrier to entry really low at the beginning. right? So pretty much anybody can compete. And then, and then there's some down selects, or there's some, something that happens, and all of a sudden it gets harder and then it gets harder, and then it gets harder. And at each of these points, we give milestone prizes to some number of teams. Not enough for them to drop out of the competition, but enough for them to fund themselves going forward. We also spend a lot of money educating teams on how to raise capital. We all know that the best innovators aren't the best business people. So our job is to almost act like an incubator. 
and make sure all those teams that go through our competition can make it out to the marketplace. Prizes absolutely don't work when it's like something where the market is gonna be small at the end of the day. Basic research, absolutely much better for a grant. Basic scientific research, don't ever think about a prize. Good prizes are built on, on a very important solid foundation. You need to address a market failure. When you go to the doctors, you want them to cure your disease and not your symptoms. If you don't actually figure out what is hindering that market, you're gonna fail. You need to define the problem, not a solution. This is really hard for people, and grants often define a solution. We just say, you need to do A, B, and C. And as long as you do A, B, and C, and not D, E, and F, because that's really bad, you win. Sure, it might have to fit in this box, but we don't care. Just do it. You have to have an audacious but achievable target. It has to be inspiring to people. But they also have to know if they try to win it, they have a chance. Otherwise, they're going to look at it and be like, mm, thanks, I got other things to do. Right? You need to have a clear measure of success. The teams need to know if I do A, B, and C, I win. They're spending significant amounts of money. And if all of a sudden it's money, they go, mm, not interested. You want to be able to tell great stories. You want to make sure there's a follow-on market, even if you have to build it. It's really important. Otherwise, there's not as much incentive for them. And then it has to be rewarding and simple for the teams to compete and us to operate. 